In today's video, we have an interesting topic in the world of pressure washers, and that is, does the size of your pressure washer hose matter? Now, in the past, I've done a test testing like a 50-foot hose, which is a 25-foot hose versus a 100-foot hose, and I had no change in PSI or GPM, at least over those distances. However, I've never tested the inner diameter of a hose, you know, a quarter inch hose versus a three inch hose and so on. So in today's video, we're gonna be testing just that. Now I recently reviewed the brand new AR630, their new version, and I tried it with both a three eighths inch hose and a quarter inch hose, and I did lose some performance. Uh, so here's the numbers that I got from that machine. With a three eight hose uh, and the specific nozzle I was using, I was getting 990 PSI at 2.327 gallons per minute keeping that exact same nozzle size, but just changing over to a quarter inch hose, it reduced my PSI by 20. Uh, so it was at 970 PSI and also dropped my GPM down to 2.31. So in order to test that a little bit deeper, I have the brand new Ryobi 1.8 uh, GPM. This is their automotive pressure washer, and I'm gonna be testing it with three different hoses, PSI and GPM to see what the differences are. So we're going to be using a 3 8 inch hose, a quarter inch Uberflex hose, and then also the hose that it comes with. This is a 40 foot hose, but the diameter is quite thin. Let me go ahead and show you guys in comparison, a quarter inch Uberflex versus this one. You can see it's quite a bit thinner. I don't know what the inner diameter is of this thing. I don't think it's listed. Um, so we're just gonna test it and see where it comes to. Now the theory behind all of this makes perfect sense. It's a thing called fluid dynamics, especially in relation to flow restriction. You can basically think of it as like drinking a bottle of water out of a regular size straw and then switching over to like a coffee stir, really, really thin straw. As you're sucking in, you can feel the resistance from it and that is what is going to be causing this issue. Because of the narrower size, the water is passing through that and even though there's a tiny, tiny orifice at the end, which is why I didn't think this made a difference, but now looking into it a bit more, it does. Um, there's something called friction loss. The water is passing through the smaller diameter and there's more friction going through versus like a 3 8 hose where there's more, uh, a larger or a opening for all of the, the fluid to just go through without any friction, or at least less friction. All right guys, so the test is gonna be very simple. I have the Ryobi 1.8 automotive pressure washer right here. Uh, the water hooked up to it, I'm gonna fire it all on here in a second. But basically I have my brand new, very accurate, very expensive Ashcroft PSI gauge. This is a digital PSI gauge. And uh, we'll be testing the PSI into a bucket and also testing the GPM at that rate. So um, I'm not gonna, force you guys to watch a minute of, of runtime with each of these. The first one we'll show you, and then the subsequent ones after that, I'll just let you know where the numbers are coming in. All right guys, so for test number one, I have the unit all set up now. So we have the PSI gauge right here, right before the gun. Now, why am I doing that? In the past, I do sometimes test at the nozzle. The reason I wanna test it here and not there is because this can also cause even more loss because it's going from a quarter inch up to a 3 8 inch to be able to fit the gauge down to a quarter inch. So that fluctuation can cause some, some disparity there. So we're doing it right here and uh, that's how we're gonna test all of them. So I'm gonna go ahead and insert this and pull this through here. So we have the 40 degree nozzle that comes with this machine, okay, in the bucket. Now, what we're gonna do is uh, test this thing for one minute. So I'm gonna set a stopwatch. We'll test it for one minute and I will also let you know where we're sitting with the PSI uh, on this machine. So just right now, as we're sitting, because there's, uh, you know, the unit is pressurized, we're sitting at 308 PSI. Let me go ahead and get this all sorted with the timer and we'll get going. All right guys, timer is ready and here we go. All right guys, so for PSI, we're bouncing right around here. So we're gonna call it 845 because we're kind of bouncing between the two. So I might be a little bit generous, but 845. All right, there's our one minute mark. So let me go ahead and weigh this up. And I'll let you guys know where we sit. All right, guys, so I just went ahead and weighed this out and we are coming in at 1.58 gallons per minute. So we're gonna go ahead and switch on now to the uh, quarter inch hose and we'll go from there. So we're gonna go ahead and do the exact same test. Like I said, I'm not gonna make you wait through the whole thing. I'll fast forward this for you guys, but I will show you the PSI numbers as well. So here we go. So as you can see, we are getting more PSI this time. We're up to 884. 885, 886. We'll see where that lands. We're up to 890, let's see. 889, 890. And that should pretty much be it, guys. It might bounce around a little bit, but we're gonna give it 890. All right, so increase in PSI from 
845 up to 890, I think, yeah, 890. And also flow, uh, we went from 1.58 gallons per minute to 1.62 gallons per minute. All right, guys, and last but not least, we have the 3 8 inch hose. So again, I'll show you the PSI as we go. So we got a little bit of a drip from the system there, but we are up to 90, it's bouncing around again. We're gonna call it 90, 905. It's all the way up to 907. Oh, we're going 907. All right, and the numbers are in guys. So again, we increased again, both PSI and GPM. Uh, so we are now at 907 PSI and we are at 1.64 GPM. So that increased from 1.62 and 890 PSI. So one other thing to note um, is amperage. Did that change the amperage? And the answer is yes, I was monitoring that as well. One caveat though, as, as these things, as pressure washers warm up, the oil starts going through the pump and all that kind of stuff, they get a little more efficient, start to drop the amperage and all that kind of good stuff. With that said, you know, I use the smallest, the most restrictive hose first, right? So there could be some variance included with that, but probably not too much. So here are the numbers that I got. With the factory hose that the Ryobi, a Ryobi unit comes with, a really thin one, I was getting 13.4 amps. Switching over to the quarter inch Uberflex, 13.1 amps. And then with the 3 8 inch hose, 12.9 amps. So yes, it affects it on every level. Uh, a significant amount, no, right? Percentages wise, it's not a ton. Um, my personal recommendation here, for me, um, just, I still go with a quarter inch hose. That's just my personal preference here, guys. I'm still getting plenty of performance out of it. And the, the lightweight feeling of the quarter inch hose versus the three eighths hose is, uh, is well worth the sacrifice and a tiny bit of performance for me. So for me, quarter inch for sure is still where I'm gonna go. To be perfectly honest with you, I have a 3 8 uh, inch hose on a retractable hose reel in my truck, in my mobile detail setup. And it's great, um, but when I'm using that versus my home setup where I'm using a quarter inch, boy, do I feel the difference in weight. Like you, you seriously feel it, not only just in the hose material, but then you gotta think there's more water weight in that hose as well. So for me guys, 100% quarter inch is where I prefer. So there you go guys, again, Fluid dynamics, flow restriction is a real deal. Um, is it significant when we're talking about pressure washers that are under that 2000 PSI? No, it's not significant, but it is there. And if you, I would assume if you're amplifying that to like a 5000 PSI, you know, um, uh, a gas powered pressure washer or something like that, that gets a lot of flow and a lot of PSI, you'll probably see a bigger difference there. And you might be even be overloading that machine if it's designed to work with a 3 8 hose. So just keep that in mind. Um, but that is it for today's video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Please make sure to like the video. Make sure you subscribe, turn on that notification bell, and we will see you guys on the next one.